I'll tell you this. By an act of God, and I'm talking about this guy right here, man. This guy worked miracles for this team. And that guy is Adam Gase. Adam Gase got this team to seven wins last year and the last few seasons with absolutely nothing to work with. Nothing. He had to bring back Jay Cutler last year. And just to get to those wins, I thought was almost a miracle. And what did the Dolphins do? They fire him at the end of the season. Now, Miami has one of the hardest schedules in football. The AFC East has improved dramatically. They lost a bunch of players, including their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. They picked up Fitzmagic, who we know is only good as a backup. Once you tell him he's a starter, he's a different player. They overpaid for Josh Rosen by that second-round pick. Josh Rosen isn't proven. The only free agency, the, the only free agent they picked up that's worth a damn is Dwayne Allen, in my opinion. Okay, I like their pick of defensive tackle Christian Wilkins and edge rusher Andrew Van Ginkle was late in the draft and could be a steal. I liked him a lot in Wisconsin. But this team, I think, is going to have it tough to even get to three wins. If I could take a prop on the Dolphins going 0-16, which you can, I'm going to find one. Um, if it's better than 10-1, I'm definitely going to do that. Otherwise, I might do a fade money line rollover on them, meaning I bet the other team for the win every game Take the profit of every single bet and the initial bet and rolling it over until it builds up quickly. <laughs> this team is going to be the sorriest team in the NFL. Okay? Sorriest. And my number is 2.05 wins. They had seven wins last year. Their Pythagorean was 4.55, meaning they got lucky. A lot of these wins. So I have 5.8 from last year. They're kind of healthy, so I took away a quarter game. They had an easy schedule, so I took away a full game. They have a hard schedule this year, so I'm taking away a full game. They lost a ton, so I'm minusing two and a half games for their coach, their quarterback, and all those other players. They get a game back for what they got in the draft and their free agency. My number is 2.05 wins, and the Vegas win total is at 5. So as you see, I am definitely taking a big stance on the fact that I don't think Miami Dolphins are going to win 5 games. And I actually think out of any other NFL team, they have the best chance of not winning at all. You better lock it up. You better lock it up. No, you lock it up. You lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Next, we have the Buffalo Bills. Vegas win total is seven. They won six games last year. Man, I remember how, how bad they started out. It was awful. And people were calling them the worst team last year. Well, they didn't end up being the worst team. The Jets only had four wins. The Raiders had four wins. The Cardinals had three wins. So, But uh, they, they started out bad, but their defense kind of started showing up. And so did their quarterback. The Bills' schedule is easy this year. It's ranked easy. Okay? That means one of the sixth easiest schedules in the league. Their at-large games are against the Denver Broncos and the Tennessee Titans. Their key losses, John Miller at guard, tight end Charles Clay, and tight end Logan Thomas. Their key additions, running back Frank Gore, center Mitch Morse, running back, or wide receiver John Brown, wide receiver Cole Beasley, tight end Tyler Croft, guard Spencer Long, offensive tackle Ty Nischke, and Frank, a bunch of other guys, you know. They drafted defensive tackle Ed Oliver from Houston. 
top ranked guy, guard Cordy Ford, uh, running back Devin Singletary, tight end Dawson Knox, linebacker for Sean Joseph, and a few other guys. This Bills team really didn't lose anybody, which I like. I was also somewhat wrong last year, and I apologize for this. I was wrong on Josh Allen. You know, sure, he wasn't that accurate. And he didn't come into the league that being that, that accurate. But that kid can run the ball when needed. And he knows when to take off. And he makes smart decisions. And he gets to the ground. I love how he plays. He really showed me something last year. I also love how they picked up John Brown. I love John Brown. He did great on the Ravens last year. And Cole Beasley. That's going to help the passing game out a little bit. Okay. I also like how they helped out their offensive line in the draft. And in free agency, GM Brandon Bean drafting Oliver and Ford was also very smart, in my opinion. Ed Oliver's a beast, and he can be huge as long as he can keep his head right. Tight end Knox and Sweeney improved the security blanket options for Allen as well. They got two good tight ends out of the draft. The only thing that Buffalo missed out on, I think, was really edge rusher, but they they covered a ton of holes, Okay. So, my number on Buffalo came up to 8.3 wins. 8.3. The Bills had six wins last year. Their Pythagorean was 4.46, so I have it at 5.3 on the average. Didn't take away or give them anything for injuries. They had a medium schedule last year, so zero. They have an easy schedule. I'm giving them a game for that. They didn't lose anybody, really. So not taking away anything. And I believe what they got from the draft and from free agency, I'm giving them two full games for all of those moves that they made. Like I said, I love Ed Oliver. I love Frank Gore as a leader. I mean, if Shady's hurt, he'll be great. John Brown, Cole Beasley, Tyler Croft. I think they they killed it in free agency. So, giving them two games for that. My number is 8.3, but their Vegas win total is 7. So, Vegas is seeing something as well. I lean to the over. It's almost a play. But it's not quite there. Didn't hit the threshold of 1.5. Last but not least, this time, the New York Jets. The New York Jets had, like I said before, four wins. And their Vegas win total is seven. Four to seven. Well, that's a big jump. Almost like their quarterback was injured last year. I think Vegas sees the same kind of things I do. And I think I'm going to break it down for you. The Jets' key losses. They lost a decent amount. Cornerback Morris Claiborne. Quarterback Josh McCown. Wide receiver Jermaine Curse, Guard James Carpenter. Cornerback Buster Scrine. He was a slot corner. Nickel corner, whatever, sorry. Uh, Kicker Jason Myers. Running back Isaiah Crowell, running back Bilal Powell, center guard Spencer Long, Terrence Brooks on safety. They lost a decent amount, but their key additions, Le'Veon Bell at running back, C.J. Mosley at inside linebacker from the Ravens, Kalichi Osamelli guard, wide receiver Jameson Crowder, wide receiver Josh Bellamy, which was he played for the Bears. He was a special team guy. Guard Tom Compton. Quarterback Trevor Simeon. Chandler Casanzaro, kicker. Cornerback Brian Poole. And then they drafted defensive tackle Quinnen Williams, the top one from the draft out of Alabama, offensive linebacker. Uh, Ja'Kai Polite. Offensive tackle Chuma Ed. Ed- at Oga, sorry for destroying his name, um, and a couple other guys. So the biggest pickup for the Jets this year, everyone thinks, is Le'Veon Bell, but it's not. 
It's absolutely not. Because the biggest pickup for the Jets is coach Adam Gase. (laughs) Okay. Adam Gase. Like I said before, great coach, and it's within the division. Gase is going to have a chip on his shoulder coming in. I absolutely love this. He's the quarterback whisperer. He did amazing things with Cutler as a coordinator on the Bears. Amazing. You know, he got the best out of him. He's going to get the best out of Sam Darnold. The Jets lost a bunch of guys, but they're, I guess, mostly no names, you would say. Right? Mostly. (laughs) I love the C.J. Mosley, Tom Compton, and Osamelli pickup. Bell is an upgrade over Crowder. Or, sorry, Crowell. But, uh, you know, I mean, I know Bell's a bit of a head case, and I've ripped on him before for that. But, you know, you still got to... You, you still got to give it up for Bell. He's a very talented man. He's very good at running the ball. This team's really improved as far as I'm concerned. And I love their easier schedule. They're at large games. Okay. They get to play the Raiders and the Jacksonville Jaguars for their at large schedule. So. The Raiders had four wins last year. The Jacksonville Jaguars had five. So there you go. So the thing about the the Jets, all right, I personally wanted to bet this team. Yeah, I wanted to bet the over before I saw it, okay? But Vegas apparently sees exactly some of the things I have, and they made their Vegas win total seven. They got four wins last year, and their Vegas win total is seven. So that's a little high for me. And I got to tell you, I don't like how the Jets' schedule lines up from the get-go. They play the Browns, whom everyone is high on, right? And then the Patriots. And for the first game, they play the Bills. So... They, then they have a very hard schedule. They play the Browns, the Patriots, the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Patriots again, and then at Jacksonville, and then their schedule gets easier. But that is a brutal five, six games right there. You know, <laughs> I think it would be huge if they can get two wins during those six games. It would be huge. So, I have their number at 6.9 wins. And the way I got there, they had four wins last year, but their Pythagorean was 4.77. So I'm going starting with 4.4 wins on the average. Nothing for injuries. Medium easy schedule last year. Take away a half game. But easy schedule this year, give them, give them a full game. They lost about a half game's worth of production. Like I said, a lot of those guys were no names. There's a lot of, lot of guys. But I'm giving them 2.5 games back for the coach that they got, Gase, Le'Veon Bell, for Quinn and Williams, Draft, you know, and some of the other guys that I already mentioned. So, big upgrade there. That brought me to 6.9 wins. Vegas has it at 7. But I still lean to the over. I like Adam Gase. This could be a very, very interesting team this year if Sam Darnold can gel. Now, if you're looking at a a prop to win the conference, obviously the Patriots are going to be like minus 400. But if you think that they won't do it, I would almost bet the Jets before I would bet the Bills. Okay? Now, my Bills season win total is higher. But I got to tell you, I'm higher on the coach for the for the Jets and some of the things that they did. And I think their quarterback might be a little bit better as well. So there you have it. Those are our season win totals for the AFC East. Now it's time to bring on Marco D'Angelo from wagertalk.com to discuss the Belmont. And now I'm very excited to welcome back one of the best and most 